Hi, everybody. I'm very excited to be here at BaselCon once again. Uh, I've got a lot to talk about, so I'm going to dive right in. Um, Aspect is, uh, has, is here to make Basel better for you. And the first way we do that is with workflows. So this is a talk in two parts. Um, workflows is, uh, comes out of this original Basel blog post from when, when 1.0 was released. Um, and it says users have reported 3x test time reductions and 10x faster build speeds after switching to Basel. And the key words to look at here is users have reported. So the Basel team was not promising you these things. Um, and in our experience, uh, you know, we, we, we want to know who these users actually are. Like, uh, is anybody getting this performance? Yes. Uh, here's Max. I don't know if he's in the room right now at BaselCon uh, last year um, and reported a, a pretty fantastic result. Um, the year before that, we heard from Tencent. The year before that, uh, every year at BaselCon, there are talks about how some company has managed to uh, get some of these benefits. And what we saw as Aspect went to over 40 companies now to help them adopt Basil is that most of them were not getting those benefits out of the box. Um, so, I mean, obviously all of you are using Basil. How many of you had the sort of uh, performance improvements that were promised when you first set it up? Okay. Uh, that's, that's, that's more than I expect. Okay. Maybe, maybe, maybe less, uh, about, about 10 hands maybe. Um, what we saw, so this is at VideoAmp. Um, here's a commit where somebody added a single line to a markdown file. So this ought to be a very fast rebuild, and it took four minutes, which was totally not acceptable. Um, here's another customer here. This is the 99th percentile slow case, which is another one we look at. This is the pathological case where most of the actions really are cache misses. Um, and uh, unfortunately, the number is exactly in between these two screens here. But it took, uh, I think this is a 21-minute build um, to, to rebuild everything. Um, so this was supposed to be a highly cached build. So why was this one so slow? Um, and of course, the answer to this is subtle. So for uh, a number of companies, we helped them develop a CI solution from scratch. Um, and there was a lot of work to do. Uh, so you can read it here in this blog post, uh, what are some of those steps? And I'm sure some of your companies have already gone through the work of building a custom CI solution that makes Bazel super fast. Um, the first thing that you find that you have to do, of course, is to avoid having ephemeral runners because Bazel is fast when it has a local cache. Um, most CI systems are not based on this. They are based on the assumption that the build tool is incorrect and stale build results is the main problem that you have. And so they always start up a pool of workers. Each worker starts up, does one build and terminates. Um, and if you just follow this instructions from your CI system, you'll probably end up with a build like that that's very slow. Of course, Bazel is meant to be correct, and so it is okay to reuse runners. And so you want to do the opposite. You want to host um, warm workers talking to a remote cache so that they are able to share intermediate artifacts. Um, and so is that it? Is that the end of the talk? No, I still have a few minutes left. So let me tell you, no, that's not the end. Uh, that will still be a slow build. The, end, the reason is that there's a long list of, of de-optimizations that occur on CI. Don't have time to go to talk through each of these, but essentially, in the analysis phase, Bazel is building the dependency graph. That needs to be cached in the JVM. And so restarting the JVM or discarding that cache will slow you down. Um, having a low cache hit rate, there's already been talks at BaselCon uh, and yesterday's community day about how to avoid doing too much execution because you're not getting the cache hits that you should have. Um, there are mistakes in how you host an individual machine um, that will make Bazel slow. And then there's also mistakes in how you host a cluster of machines um, because, of course, you want your builds to be elastic and scale in and scale out. So you have slow 99th percentile builds where uh, a new machine had to boot up for that build. Um, remote execution, of course, is, is, uh, is, a, is, a, is a great solution to a certain set of problems. We think it's the performance optimization of last resort, and there's a few reasons for that. One is that it doesn't help with most of the problems I just described. Um, those are problems that happen during the loading and analysis phase. It's not enough to just send all of your actions off to be remotely executed. It's fairly broken in the sense that you will have to go through some work to go th to make sure that the rule sets are using are compatible, especially if the host and execution platforms are different and many people's builds are not hermetic enough to run on, on remote execution at the beginning. So there's some on-ramp cost. Um, and finally, it can be expensive because if you're using remote execution just to paper over the, the problems that you have uh, hosting Bazel itself, then you're throwing more machines at it and um, and in some cases, there are rule sets that it will, will, will uh, make this problem even worse because things like rules Docker accidentally had really huge inputs. And those, if you aren't very, very careful with either build without the bytes or keeping action execution local when the inputs are local, then those things will be sent over the network. Uh, so of course, this being the product talk, 
um, we have a solution for this. We've deployed this at 15 companies now. It's called Aspect Workflows. And the idea is that it runs on your cloud and on your CI. We're not asking you to migrate anything. Um, it is co-managed. We carry a pager, and we don't make money if your builds are slower. So that's good. We want to make you make your builds faster instead. Uh, we offer a one-month trial, and this is generally the point where we're able to prove to you that not only does it make your builds faster, but it actually pays for itself. So uh, we always um, help our customers to calculate the uh, savings that they're getting on their cloud machines at the end of this trial, and don't expect them to proceed unless we're able to save the money overall. Um, so let me just revisit some of the slides from earlier. So when we looked at this uh, markdown change, this sort of no-op build became two minutes faster here. Uh, if you look at our documentation site, you'll see on the homepage, uh, we had a five-second rebuild, and uh, so one of our customers said, holy moly, which is a really nice, uh, concise uh, testimonial that we were able to present on that page. Um, going back to our 99th percentile build, this one became about 2x faster, down to 11 minutes. Uh, and sort of putting it all together, uh, we did a comprehensive case study at Coda. Originally, they were spending about 10 minutes average and sometimes over 30 minutes on their 99th percentile builds. And the cost was the equivalent of two software engineers that they could have hired if they were able to reduce the cost uh, of running on CI. So their, their compute costs were two SWE equivalent. Um, so the solution, we did our one month trial. We uh, proved to them that it had good stability, uptime, that developer, the developers were able to transition. And the results we got, not making it up, are exactly the ones from the Basil 1.0 blog post. So we went from 11 minutes to one minute, as you were promised, 10x speed up. Uh, we went from, two, uh, we had a two to three X uh, speed up of their typical builds and tests. What was not mentioned in the Basil 1.0 blog post, we, they, they reduced their compute spend 67%, even though they were uh, adding more and more uh, targets to their Basil build, and so increasing usage during that period. And they said we went from having significant limits in CI and tools to where the limits are now just in our code. So the infrastructure layer is not their problem anymore. Okay, I have a few minutes left, and so I want to tell you about the other half of what Aspect does, which is rule sets. Uh, I went and checked on the Basil Central Registry, ran some quick JQ. We have published one third of the releases that are on the Basil Central Registry. We are very serious about supporting all of you through our open source efforts. Um, we maintain our rule sets to a very high standard. We believe in high quality Semver, so these are 1.0 means it. Um, we have really good documentation. Uh, we put a lot of effort into how we do releases to make things fast. Um, these are, these is, uh, we have over 20 rule sets now. So this is the, the picture as of before BaselCon. Um, the announcements I have uh, for this year, rules, rules PS, the TypeScript uh, support, has added a TS proto library. Uh, you can watch Matt's talk at the end of the day tomorrow here about rules Pi, which is a layer on top of rules Python. You can watch Derek's talk at the end of tomorrow about our Bazel lib repo, which is a, a foundation layer. We just added a new tar rule based on BSD tar. We have a partnership with ChainGuard, which makes super secure base images. And so rules apco is a way to build these on Alpine. Um, and then rules AWS and rules lint are over there in the experimental corner. I just want to point out rules lint in particular is pretty exciting because when we pair it with workflows, we're able to put the lint results along with the suggested fixes in the next release uh, will show up in your code review. Doesn't require changes to rule sets or to build files to be able to lint them. And why am I saying Bazel lint? Is that a lie? That's not actually a lie. We have our own CLI. And so we can actually add the lint command to Bazel through either a plugin or uh, or building it in. Our CLI also has more uh, a pre compiled version of Gazelle. So you don't have to build Gazelle yourself in your repo. We're adding more languages there. We have a docs command um, to pop things open in your browser. We have an init command to make a new workspace. We have help. Basil also has help, but ours is helpful. Uh, I know, I, and I, I, don't mean to, I don't mean to dig on the Basil team. I appreciate all of their effort very much. I appreciate all of you for coming to BaselCon and listening. Thank you very much. All right, thank you, Alex.